I just came across a crazy story about a Mexican village where it is believed that coke is a holy drink, even though almost all villagers suffer from diabetes caused by it. In this village, it is also easier to find Coca-Cola than bottled water, even though it's the company that is responsible for drying up all local water sources. Wait, we'll come back to this village. It's just one piece of the puzzle. 94% of the world's population is familiar with the name Coca-Cola. But what's behind this? Bubbles and nostalgia, big family dinners and romantic walks in the snow. With Coke, everything goes well, everything is magic. But what about marketing lies and fabricated stories and political agendas? What about climate change, habitat, resources, water stealing and pollution, human rights, animal rights? Does anyone care? Let's dig deeper. Founded in 8086, Coca-Cola owns an astonishing 500 brands and thousands of products available in more than 200 countries. So imagine this. If you were to try one of its products every day, it would take you almost 11 years to try them all. Crazy, right? Also, this single company has a higher annual income than two-thirds of the world's countries. Isn't it a bit ironic that one of Coca-Cola's mascots, the white polar bear amid ice caps, is actually dying out due to carbon emissions which the brand produces in excess? In 2020, Coca-Cola produced amounts of CO2 emissions equivalent to 3 million 241,996 passenger vehicles driven for one year. And that's the tip of the iceberg. For the fifth year in a row, Coca-Cola has been crowned the world's top plastic polluter. Of all plastic produced since the 1950s, only 9% has actually been recycled globally. And by 2050, there could be more plastic than fish in the sea. Coca-Cola says it wants to do something about this, but... Does it really? Rather than investing in sourcing renewable or recycled materials for its products, the company is disproportionately allocating funds to promote an eco-friendly image. And while it's busy greenwashing its image, Coca-Cola's 58 bottling plants in India have been exacerbating water scarcity during a nationwide drought. But it doesn't end here. In 2015, the New York Times revealed that Coca-Cola had found a scientist to shift blame from obesity away from sugary drinks. They influenced officials at the US National Health Agency, the CDC, and aimed to convince the World Health Organization to promote a misleading narrative. Even children were spared in Coca-Cola's efforts to mislead the public. As the company funded a study closely linking childhood obesity to lack of physical activity. Now, imagine living under conditions that mean simply joining a trade union could get you killed or see you threatened and may be driven into exile out of fear of company thugs. Well, labor lawyers and human rights activists are saying that this is the exact situation Coca-Cola workers in the Global South have been facing. The Killer Coke case revealed that Coca-Cola had failed to provide its Colombian workers with safe working conditions. Most Coke trade unionists in the South American country had been mistreated, with many being kidnapped and some even killed. In 1999, Coke also showed the world its racist face. A class action lawsuit was filed by African American employees of Coca Cola in the US against the company over racial discrimination, which was resulting in overpay, fever promotions, and poor performance evaluations among the company's black workers. The following year, Coca Cola agreed to the largest settlement ever incorporate racial discrimination case. Now, back to where we began Mexico, which is home to Coca Cola's largest fan base. But how? And why? Well, Coke started to gain popularity in the country during the late 1960s and 70s, when Winston Fox, the former president of Coca-Cola, became the president of Mexico in 2000. But what's even crazier is the Mexican village of San Cristobal de las Casas, where it's easier to find Coke than bottled water, and for almost the same price. Here, villagers believe that coke has a soul-healing power. It is used by local shamans as part of their religious ceremonies, and it's believed that the drink has curative properties. Even if many people in the village suffer from diabetes, which is the second leading cause of death in the state, Chipas, where it claims more than 3,000 lives every year. And despite portable water being increasingly scarce, 
to the point that some neighborhoods only have running water for a few times per week. And many households are forced to buy extra water from tanker trucks. And guess who the culprit is? The whole King Coca-Cola factory on the edge of town. Finally, we can't end this without mentioning that Coca-Cola has a 57-year history of supporting the apartheid state of Israel. The company not only maintains a manufacturing plant in an illegal settlement in the occupied West Bank, but it is also donating supplies to the Israeli military. Is Coke real magic? Or it is actual real evil? You decide.